Um, thank you, Kevin, for introducing me. So promising. I hope I can keep and prove what you said. Um, <clears throat> Uh, oops, do we have some? Um, I had to improvise a bit today uh, because I cannot run the films from here. So I hopefully my colleague Stephanie Klinge uh, and the technicians are going to um, start the uh, presentation from up there. But meanwhile, maybe uh, I take the time to introduce myself and uh, my office, and I'd like to thank the organizers, the hosts here of this fantastic museum, and of course, Halina, for inviting me and us. This is not only me. If I'm uh, speaking here, that means uh, uh, in the background there are about 80 uh, staff members from 15 different uh, nations and 13 different disciplines. Um, and we, um, as the Atelier Bruckner, are working worldwide on uh, sophisticated um, museum projects. I'm also a co-founder of an institute in Basel, as uh, Kevin mentioned uh, earlier, uh, Institute for Exhibition Design and um, Scenography, uh, which uh, deals with the modern approach or contemporary approach of how museums could be uh, staged uh, nowadays in the 21st uh, century. Um, the AT uh, Bruckner was found in 1997. Uh, our institute in Basel was found or refound in 2001. So 1997, we started with the um, uh, well-known, I think, uh, Titanic exhibition that took place in Hamburg and uh, draw attention to 1.5 million visitors in one and a half years. Then it was the most successful exhibition on German uh, ground and from, from there we started the uh, business according uh, to our philosophy uh, form follows uh, content. So all the projects that I'm showing and all the theory I'm sharing with you my design theory is based on um, form follows content. So all the designs are based on curatorship. Um, so can we start? Two more minutes. I just bridge it. <laughs> I bridge it with my uh, theory and um, my design philosophy, uh, which is based on scenography. Uh, scenography is uh, connotated completely differently. Um, throughout Europe uh, and uh, again differently um, in the Americas uh, or in Asia. Uh, actually it's based or it's coming from uh, the Skene which is, was Greek and it was meant to be um, uh, the paramo uh, behind, oh there we go, <coughs> so then it's easier for me. Uh, if I can use this, I'm not used to that. Okay, well, um, yeah, let's start from the early beginning uh, with my title, Scenography or the Art of Holistic Space Experience. And what you see is, uh, by the way, it's a work of one of my students, Laura Knüsel, from the Institute of Interior Design and, Ex um, and um, Scenography uh, in Basel. Uh, and it's an uh, installation uh, about Pink Floyd that we did um, last year, 25 students uh, interpreting 25 songs of um, Pink Floyd, and this was one of the installations, so a person could uh, listen to vaguely uh, interpretation of a, a song. So let's see if it works. No? Can you operate it from up there? There's only one picture available, as you can see. Uh, one picture for 200, ah, here we go. So this is uh, the team, uh, just uh, um, uh, photographed in front of the Rautenstrauch Jost Museum in, in Cologne, Ethnological uh, Museum, and if, uh, uh, yeah, um, and um, this is, uh, 
uh, this is a sketch for my philosophy. Uh, I call this uh, the diamond of suspense. And I think it's all about uh, this relationship between uh, the collections or the object, the space like the museum, uh, and it's all done for the addressees, for the recipient, so the visitors. And around there, I think, uh, in a contemporary installation of a modern museum, uh, we need a dramatic structure. And uh, this dramatic uh, structure is based, as I said, uh, on scenography. So what is scenography about? Scenography, I think, is an overall integrative, uh, synchronized and multidisciplinary content consistent design philosophy. So it, this is, you see, it's very condensed. Uh, you can read more in the book I, I wrote uh, about what is it in detail. So it unifies logic and magic. So the logic of the uh, of the artifacts and the magic of the interpretation and the power. It's definitely uh, driven uh, by structures coming from theatre, like the magic flute here that I designed, or uh, it's about light. Uh, as you can see uh, here, the Titanic exhibition uh, illustrating and representing two uh, kind of object uh, groups, uh, so a third-class working boot and originally corked uh, champagne uh, bottles for the uh, luxury uh, segment. It's about atmospheres that we can create, like this, uh, meanwhile, multi-copied ice wall, where one, uh, more than one million people left their traces as a reference to the people that died uh, in this uh, disaster. So the ice wall, um, opposite of the um, most um, uh, well-known painting uh, of the wreckage of the Titanic. Uh, yeah, it's, it's all about uh, respect to the objects. As you can see in the room of silence, there's just objects lit hovering in a completely dark um, uh, room, completely insulated acoustically uh, from the outside uh, to pay as much respect to the objects as uh, possible. Uh, or uh, using the object as a star, as you can see, the bell, uh, most likely Frederick uh, Fleet uh, rang when he saw uh, the iceberg. And uh, uh, for that, we dedicated 200 square meters just for this uh, object, which played a major role in the storytelling of the Titanic. Sometimes uh, our task is, uh, what as at least I call it, uh, to use museum like a window to secret worlds, like a door opener um, to sophisticated um, curator's experience. And this is a good example for that. To exhibit books, uh, I think it's, it's the most uh, tiring and boring things uh, because you only can see a, thread, uh, a spread, only two pages of about 300 and 400 of this uh, fantastic collection of pattern books in the Textile and Industry Museum um, in um, Augsburg, near Munich. And what we did, we scanned the books and gave digital uh, access um, for the visitors to explore the patterns. So more than um, 1.2 million patterns are hosted in the archive of the Textile and Industry Museum. And how, how can we operate this? How can we give a reference to what the patterns were about? So we installed together with Tamsik Media and uh, Anja Leutle, uh, the, um, an, an artists, these uh, oversized figurines, 4.5 meter high figurines that are turning uh, in reality and uh, that are projected in 3D um, the patterns that you can withdraw uh, from this interactive book. So you choose a pattern and in real time it's thrown 3D on the figurine while it's turning. By the way, the interface is exactly the surface uh, of the tailor. Uh, so uh, even the method how to achieve it is uh, authentic. Uh, it led to the, um, to the effect that uh, designers from all over Europe, especially students, go to the place and um, use the uh, historic patterns to do their own uh, design, uh, as you can see. Much more sophisticated 
uh, are books like autographs uh, here. Uh, this was um, the Ricordi exhibition in Brussels, 200 years of uh, Italian opera, uh, presenting auto autographs from um, um, Donizetti, Bellini, Donizetti, um, uh, Puccini, Verdi, or Luigi Nono, for example. Uh, so you know what these, uh, what the valuables are of these um, uh, objects. And again, uh, it's quite boring. It's only something for experts because you only see a thread. And most of the uh, uh, visitors, amateurs in music, cannot read uh, the scores. Uh, so therefore we installed an accessible orchestra pit where you can walk around and listen to the single instrument. So each of these scores is dedicated to a single instrument. Yeah, while you're walking through the orchestra pit, you can um, perceive uh, the playing, the performance of the instrument, and uh, we designed uh, together with Jangled Nerves, an uh, interactive uh, score where you can uh, withdraw uh, five uh, different operas uh, interactively and uh, see how they are composed uh, and how music comes into being. So this is what I call to make paper sound. Um, we also did a similar thing uh, in uh, the Bach Museum in Eisenach, but now you see the score is running up. You can choose uh, whether the original um, uh, notation um, uh, of uh, La Bohème in this uh, case, uh, or the transcript one. Um, unfortunately, we don't have music. Do we have music? Would be nice. <laughs> in that case, well, um, anyway, uh, um, with this uh, um, score line, you can see which instruments are on and which voices are uh, on and which voices are uh, coming. So. Yeah, fantastic, thank you. A bit louder, please. So it, it's all real, uh, it's, uh, it's not a fake, so even the conductor um, was performing lively and we shot him uh, and uh, integrated him into the uh, interactive um, uh, score, as you can see. So even an amateur can follow uh, the notation and the score and can find out how uh, music is performed. So it's just paper in the exhibition, but the experience uh, is a, a life experience that deciphers and detects uh, the, the fantastic content that only experts uh, know. Yeah, uh, maybe similar but uh, differently, uh, with different background, is this interactive uh, watch. It's a 10 to 1 uh, scale watch that you can assemble and disassemble in real time. And it's all based on the blueprints of the engineers. So we scanned the blueprints of the engineers and we animated uh, them. And now with this installation, we give access to a caliber 60 uh, mechanical uh, watch in the German Watch Museum. Um, uh, uh, near Dresden. Yeah. Or sometimes uh, you have a lot of uh, pri um, secondary material coming with the originals, like this uh, uh, fabulous collection of 80 years of um, aeroplane models in the Donny Museum in Friedrichshafen at the Lake uh, Constance. Uh, and you see, it's, they, they are, the models are hosted in four uh, aluminum uh, cases, showcases, representing 80 years. So if you look through, you see the entire uh, genesis of Donier's um, um, uh, water plane uh, design. And there are fantastic movies coming with it in secondary material. So therefore, we thought uh, uh, we should integrate it. Oh, oh it's a pity. Uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately, I can't show it to you because it takes two minutes to get to this uh, place. Ah, thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, okay, so wh what we did is we wanted to integrate uh, the primary objects with the secondary material, and this lady is just activating one of the showcases, and one of the screens, uh, one of the... Um, uh, of the glasses turns in the screen and offers the secondary material like these um, uh, films um, that are synchronized uh, with the objects in the, in the showcase. So it's exactly the movies uh, that uh, are the reference uh, to the objects uh, shown. 
Or, for example, um, the CERN, C-E-R-N, the Large Hydron uh, Collider Information Center in Geneva, uh, Switzerland. Uh, and believe me, when, I, when we started this project, when we won this international uh, competition, I had no idea of particle physics. I'm an artist, I'm a stage designer uh, from origin, so I had no ideas. It took me many dinners and lunches to talk to the scientists and to find out how uh, to translate it uh, into an accessible and perceivable um, environment. And what you see here, exactly, or almost exactly, uh, is an interpretation of the computer graphics the scientists using to illustrate what is going on in these um, micro, 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 micro uh, laboratories uh, down at the accelerator. And I just uh, uh, took one of the examples. So this is the first uh, spheric uh, showcase that I know. So there's a real object in this uh, globe. And at the same time, it's... Um, uh, um, it's a lively connected webcam to the uh, accelerator, especially in this case to the magnet in 100 meter uh, below ground. So uh, with this interactive surface, you can explore the space down there in uh, real time. And there are spots of interest uh, that you can trigger. And all these spots are coming from the experts who wanted to illustrate or to convey uh, certain information to the visitors. And it became so popular uh, that the place is booked out uh, at least three or four, mon four months ahead. Uh, especially, uh, it became um, quite interesting to uh, youngsters to explore an environment that you are not allowed to access because it's radioactive. <clears throat> yeah, what does it mean? Uh, uh, which kind of um, parameters do we need to respect? Uh, I think uh, it's the so-called Raumbild. So this is the spatial installation, the first gesture, uh, the image that you keep in mind. It is very important uh, to start or to end with a, a narrative or a project um, or a storytelling. And I want to show this um, according to the... Um, BMW Museum that we also did with Art and Com and Tamshik uh, Media. And I'm just concentrating uh, on this area, the so-called uh, central space and uh, the uh, so-called uh, media texture, sorry. <coughs> and um, the idea was uh, that, I, uh, that we wanted to create a space that uh, illustrates the dynamic that formerly was inherent of the objects. So the cars that were running uh, earlier out um, in the streets are now fixed to the ground as um, static objects. Therefore, we wanted to move uh, uh, the space. And as you see, one of my uh, sketches, I did about 600 for this um, uh, project, like a storyboard, is the, the, the first ideas of this uh, media uh, texture. So the architecture at the same time is the screen. Then it, when, we, when it was open, it was the largest screen in Germany, 750 square meters of LED screen, just hidden or integrated in the architecture. Uh, and uh, um, by the way, the BMW Museum is the smallest um, premium car museum in the world, uh, only 5,000 square meters, comparable uh, with, uh, not comparable with Mercedes-Benz, 17,500, or like Porsche, 7,500, uh, or Ferrari, 150,000 uh, in the Middle East. So we had to be smart, and what we created are these ramps uh, that are leading the uh, visitors three and a half times through the same space, offering different perspectives on the same uh, thematic issues represented in these so-called bodies or uh, cubes, uh, where you have the, um, the, um, um, the, the themes organized according to brand values. It's the only car museum in the world that's organized according to its brand values. It gives you a glimpse of uh, uh, the central uh, space with these uh, smartly designed uh, bridges uh, in, in the void. And it leads to the old uh, part of the uh, museum uh, designed by uh, Karl Schwanzer, the former museum, the so-called uh, bowl, where again the visitors uh, are navigated throughout uh, the brand values that are mentioned here um, on, on the railing. Uh, actually only thought to be used for the opening, but it stays there since 2008. It became a metaphor for how to uh, convey um, content to the public in a, in a smart uh, way. 
And the next one shows you uh, the so-called symphony uh, space. Karl Schwanzer already intended to have a, a 360 degrees projection, but it was not possible in 1972. Nowadays, with our modern media, it is possible. And all the movies start uh, with the uh, content uh, again, and I just give you a, a glimpse how it looks um, like today. So seen from the world, uh, by, designed by Kolb Himmelblau. There's also sound coming with it, uh, please, if you can. Yeah, uh, so this is not an animation. This is uh, a real shooting uh, there. So you have a free glimpse uh, into the central space of the BMW Museum. You can look down 13 uh, meters into uh, the void. You proceed uh, through the um, various thematic uh, areas. And this is just uh, to give you an idea how it is organized. So on, on first uh, view, it looks like an ordinary uh, architecture, and then it turns out to be a screen. And maybe you know this fantastic uh, installation done by the colleagues Art & Com from uh, Berlin, which became an iconic um, image for the entire museum. <clears throat> yeah, mainly in museums, we are dealing with objects. So how, how to treat the object as a star? How to make uh, the object talk uh, or sound? I would like to, uh, how many minutes? So two minutes only. Uh, <laughs> fine, <laughs> fine then. Uh, just the, uh, this is, a, as an example, this is the National Maritime Schepfert Museum, Museum in Amsterdam. Uh, and I just withdraw uh, two uh, examples for how we are installing um, objects in a, um, a spatial environment. So these are the navigational instruments not used anymore since we have GPS, so most of the youngsters have no idea what the compass or what uh, navigational instruments are about. And you see uh, the kind of environment we created around. So on the walls and on the ceiling, uh, we have the northern and uh, southern hemisphere by night, and uh, you can see uh, the star images uh, uh, that were used uh, um, uh, to navigate uh, with by these instruments. So uh, with this environment, you have uh, easy access uh, to the thematic background. And it's also a, a smart environment to introduce uh, the objects. And the next one is the globe collection. So it's a very famous globe collection. Uh, and it's another uh, aspect of sadness, like books, you only can see half of the globes, you can't touch them, you can't move them, you can't navigate with them. Earlier globes were uh, there to navigate, not only to represent. Uh, and therefore, I came up with the idea uh, to have, at the end of the originals uh, that you saw before, to have an interactive globe to make it possible to give access to the fantastic uh, collection, but not only to the globes, also to the maps uh, that they have in their archive. And uh, you see that at the end of the, uh, of the uh, in the modern times, now we have this interactive uh, globe and it works like this. I hope that the movie is starting now. Yeah, here we are. <coughs> yeah, you have a trackball. Uh, that's the globe um, in itself. Uh, and you have a reference uh, on, on the wall. Uh, so it's projected in real time. And then you can go through the history, through the genesis of globe making over 400 uh, years. And you also can see uh, how more and more precise uh, the detection of the surface of the world uh, became and how important the globes were for uh, navigation. For example, uh, Australia formerly was attached to India and then moved down um, decade by decade uh, to its original uh, place. So, and uh, yes, I know I finish. Uh, can you go to the, uh, to the very end, please, Stephanie? Uh, to the quotation. I can do it myself, yeah, okay. So, one more minute, okay? One more minute. <clears throat> yeah, let me do it, please. No, 
it, it does not really work. Yes, it does. So, uh, very often um, we are facing the problem, or let's say the luxury problem, that we have too many objects to show. And the curators want to show all th uh, their treasure they, they have in mind and they have in their uh, collection. But sometimes it's worthwhile uh, to reduce it to the maximum. Reduce to the maximum means that uh, uh, one or the other object just stands for a group of objects and recontextualize this, uh, for example, uh, heritage, ancestors, and um, thematic um, neighborhood. Like this little plate, uh, there where you have an engraving of a, um, of a horse head, and in the periphery, you have all the ancestors um, uh, of, and, and um, sisters and brothers of all horse uh, paintings and horse des description and images all around Europe, like uh, Lascaux and uh, others. Uh, to connect and to recontextualize uh, the object. Very often, uh, we are facing uh, uh, the, the challenge that we have a fantastic uh, mass of um, uh, objects, but we cannot show it, or uh, as I think, it's, uh, it's not so easy to overwhelm the visitor, but it's easy to overload uh, them by the mass of uh, objects. And what you see here is the, the final collection of everyday uh, objects, 40 meters of uh, length in this uh, shelf, uh, hosting 1,200 uh, objects. So it's an amazing gesture uh, from the periphery, and of course you can uh, walk alongside and, and uh, enjoy the objects intravenously, just you and the object, or you can withdraw all the information, the background information individually of each object in this uh, interactive uh, station. I call this information uh, on demand, a contemporary museum in the 21st century should offer individual access to the information by information on demand. So the visitors should be able to withdraw the information where, when, and how, and uh, how much ever he or she uh, wants to do, like in the Rautenstrauch Joost Museum uh, in uh, Cologne, where you just touch the, um, the showcases uh, cases and the information is withdrawn. I think it's the re relationship of the parameters, as I mentioned uh, before, and I think it is rather, uh, it's not the, the virtual in the real, but the real in the virtual that interests us. And this is, by the way, uh, one of the unique potentials of uh, the museum. Uh, a museum should be a uh, place where I need to be and to go. My physical presence is needed uh, to achieve uh, and to perceive um, what is on uh, display, so it's not withdrawable 24 hours uh, on the internet, but it makes me go and travel to Warsaw, for example, to this uh, fantastic place. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>